Hi everyone! In the previous video, we saw how a height field could be used to generate a terrain in Terrigen that matched the terrain from another 3D software package. In this video, we'll continue where we left off and introduce Terrigen's erosion operator to change the appearance of the low-resolution mountains into something more naturalistic. So far, our Terrigen terrain looks very much like the previous terrain from our 3D package, which is a good thing at this point in the process. For this part of the video, we'll set up an additional camera in order to get a wider view of the terrain. You can press the Alt-Shift buttons on your keyboard while holding down the left mouse button to zoom out for a wider view. We want to transform these previs blocky mountain shapes into something more realistic. Terrigen gives us many different ways to do this, but in this video, we'll use erosion. Erosion is the process of wearing away the Earth's topography over a period of time and redistributing that material somewhere else. Let's start eroding away our 3D previs terrain using the height field operators built into Terrigen. With the height field shader selected, click on the Add Operator button and select Height Field Erode. In order to get a clear idea of what is taking place during the erosion process, let's isolate just the erosion by setting a value of zero to the parameters that control the deposition or redistribution of eroded material. The flow distance parameter controls the overall length of a channel or groove that is eroded. For this video, we're going to reduce the default value of 100 to 10 in order to decrease the calculation time. We'll reset it when we're done exploring the individual parameters. The erosion power controls how deep a flow is. Think of it as a value of 1 means the most erosion that could occur for a given period of time. We'll set the value to 1 so we can clearly see the effect of erosion. The duration parameter represents time. The higher the value, the more time elapses. Therefore, more erosion and flows are created, and the more time they have to interact with each other. Click the Erode Now button to calculate the erosion. We'll pause the video until the erosion process is complete. Enabling the High Detail button at the top of the 3D preview will give you a better approximation of the erosion effect. Now that we know where the erosion will take place, let's find out how the eroded material is redistributed on the surface. We'll begin by returning the deposition parameters to the default settings. The deposition value controls how much of the eroded material is deposited along the flow. A value of 1 is the most accurate, meaning that all of the eroded material is deposited along the length of the flow. The deposition rate value controls whether the redistribution of eroded material along the flow is biased towards the beginning or end of the flow. The diffusion value adds some random variation to the flow directions, which can simulate roughness in the terrain and make the flows more likely to interact with each other. Click on the Erode Now button to recalculate the erosion modifier. We'll pause the video and return when the calculation is complete. Now we see the results of how the eroded material is redistributed along the surface. Some of it fills in the erosion flows, and some of it piles up in the spaces between mountains or drifts onto the plain. Now it's up to you to fine tune these settings to fit the look you're trying to achieve. We'll adjust the settings once more and recalculate the erosion. Calculating the erosion takes time. But once you have found the look you want, you can save out the results as a new height field. Let's maximize the node network pane and zoom in on the terrain group. Right click on the height field erode node and select Save File As. In the Save As dialog, navigate to where you want to save the height field and press Save. The TER format will preserve all the information, including resizing, vertical adjustment, and erosion. Let's replace our previous height field with our eroded height field. Right click in an empty area of the node network pane and select Create Height Field Operator. Then select Load. Double click the Height Field Load node to open it up. Click on the folder button next to the Read from File field and select Open. Find the saved height field, select it, and press Open. Close the Height Field Load dialog window. Click on the Output triangle at the bottom of the Height Field Load node. Then drag a line over to the height field input triangle of the height field shader node. Now our terrain won't need to be recalculated every time the project is loaded or sent to the render farm. As you can see, the erosion operator is a very powerful tool that can transform even the most basic shapes into naturalistic terrain features that have been exposed to the elements for long periods of time. In our next video, we'll add even more detail to specific sections of the terrain 
by stacking height fields on top of each other. We hope you've enjoyed this video and learned something new. Thanks for watching. Thank you.